sad news yesterday which was announced this morning and that is that Jonas of Jopnik has unfortunately passed away and uh, there's almost no words to describe who he was to so many of us around the world but uh, let's take now a moment of silence to remember him Jonas was born in 1937. He had the privilege of becoming 81. He uh, was someone who uh, put a lot of attention to physical activities. He was uh, very energetic early on. He was always on the move somewhere. He uh, was a man who became a very well-educated man, both studying, becoming a lawyer, moving to the United States to attend and to do an MBA at Harvard. And that was also part of Jonas, in the sense that he was always curious to learn. He was always trying to find out, how can I do things differently? How does the world work? He never saw himself as just uh, someone from Stockholm or someone from Sweden. He was a true cosmopolitan, a member of the world, a world citizen. And that's how he viewed the world. That's uh, how he lived his life. Watching, visiting, meeting. And that was why he was always on the quest for doing and creating new things. And that creation obviously led to the creation of, of, of Oriflame, but to many, many ventures, many, many successes, and also many failures. But Jonas, in his person, was about the future. So failures, mistakes, we're always about learning. What did we learn from this? What can we do different tomorrow? 
and not dwelling on the things that went bad. During the 1960s and 70s, in the beginning of Oriflame, Jonas was the CEO of Oriflame, and he was, so to speak, primarily interested in, and responsible for financing Oriflame. It was always a, a quest for money, because somehow Oriflame never had any. So in that sense, it was remarkable the way Oriflame was able to overcome several crises in the 70s, 80s, and financial engineering became one of Jonas's true assets. And he was actually so successful that he was able to uh, put Oriflame on the London Stock Exchange as the first non-UK company after World War II. So he did extraordinary things, even though being, so to speak, a small entrepreneur. His uh, interest was uh, larger, and therefore he was doing other ventures outside Orfeb. And that was part of the things that he wanted to pursue in the late 80s, when he saw the opportunities in other fields to do other things. So for a while he uh, left Orfeb to pursue personal interest. But the day that the Berlin Wall came down, Jonas really, again, saw the incredible opportunities. His interest for politics, history, and social science in general made him believe immediately that this was a huge new opportunity for himself and for the companies he was involved with, and of course, Oriflame. And he created Oriflame Eastern Europe, which you could say became the foundation for the success of today's Oriflame, what it is today, with uh, our natural position as a beauty company and one of the biggest direct sellers of the world. That foundation was really made on the decision of actually moving into Eastern Europe. Then Jonas, of course, saw other opportunities in Eastern Europe, created even new ventures. And last year, one of the peaks of that, those ventures, one of the companies in the health sector called Medicover, was actually also introduced to the stock exchange. And we very often talk about people who are fortunate enough to create one company. Jonas created several. We're very impressed by people who are able to put some of their creations on the stock exchange. Jonas is very unique, and actually two of his creations are on the stock exchange. That makes him a very unique person. But Jonas was much more than just business, and he was very much about people. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, the day I chose, sorry, the day I came to interview with Oriflame. I had no intention of starting here. I had never heard about the company. I was thinking of starting with Volvo or Absolute Vodka. But after the meeting with Jonas, the choice was somehow simple. Because he saw me in a way that no one had seen me before. And during these 20 years, consistently, in good times, but even more, even more so in bad times, he has been calling to always turn the coin upside down and to tell me some of the great things that we're doing to encourage, to motivate. And sometimes when I came to him with things that were failures, clear failures, he was still able to turn around so I would walk out of the room with self-confidence and just a new experience. And he had my back in so many cases where I felt that these are difficult decisions. I remember when we closed the Brussels office and he helped me even on the day when I was on stage, encouraging. And that's the one, the, the person he was. And that's the person I would like to be. So in that sense, he's truly a role model for me. And in that sense, it is so sad that he has left us. 
I would now like to show you a very small and short clip when he was here the last time. It will not take long, but please look at it. But that is what is the strength of our event. We have used these words for now 50 years. Spirit. Jonas of Jokic. On the Wednesday, he was here. And uh, he was here with his family, which is the thing that mattered the most to him. The interesting thing with Jonas is that he did not only make you feel very special, he has not once called me when asking about my children. And finishing off everything by saying, please give a hug to Maria, my wife. It is a profound person who actually thinks and believes in people. And uh, on Wednesday he was here, full of life, full of energy, having his family around. All the children were here, speaking about business how to create things, which is his biggest interest. And on the Thursday, after having lunch with one of his sons-in-law, he went to work out. So in a short period of time, Jonas was able to do the things he loved the most, to be with his family, speak about creating business opportunities, the physical workout, then he lay down to rest and never woke up. The perfect ending for him. And that's what we should remember. He lived his life to the fullest. We are here working for something that he created. And he would urge us to never, ever give up. And always look at the opportunities. Always look at the opportunities to do new things. Be curious. Always support each other. Always be motivational. Everything is possible. If you truly believe in it, and if you dare to try. So, let's, let's end this by actually looking forward. And uh, even though it may feel strange, I know it's exactly what he wanted us to do. But let's do now one clap for Jonas. Because that's what he would have wanted us to do. We remember it. We will never, ever forget him. But we are on the way forward. We are not going to stop. We are never going to give up. We are only on the move forward in his name. Okay? So, a beautiful clap for you. Jonas, the best. Thank you so much.